We're on purity uh, part eight, and obviously, as Gary said, it's about pure learning. Uh, we're going to go from the passage in Hebrew, so please turn to your Bibles, and we'll have a quick read through the Scriptures. Um, we do tend to read the Scriptures just because we want to hear the Word of God in the house of God, and we don't want to just skip through it and just take sound bites all the time. Okay, so we'll, we'll listen to the Word. It may speak to you just all on its own, without me saying a single thing, so it's well worth listening to the Word. I'm going to ask you, Kev, can you read it this week? Uh, so chapter 8, uh, we're on to the high priest of a new covenant. This is obviously still talking about Jesus. Fantastic. Hebrews 8, great passage. Another reminder that once paid, always paid for, right? Not the same as once saved, always saved, right? You've got to receive that forgiveness. You've got to stay in that place with God where he's paying your sins. But it's, and it's an amazing uh, little passage there about Jesus. But we're going to talk about the learning aspect that you can clearly see in this passage, right? It's all about learning. Can you see that? That's the challenge of a pastor. Set yourself a challenge that is actually quite hard, and then you've got to really seek God. But, and I'll do this to other people as well. We're going uh, to start with just, just a quick test, just to make sure. I, I mean, how many of you are great learners? I'll just check that first before I start this test. You know, really good learners? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, good learners? Yep. Yeah. There's quite a lot of good learners in there. Are you? Yeah, okay, learner. I like that honesty there. Thank you, Peter. Big heads over here. I always have them in my classes. There's always a few. Yes, sir. I'm, I listen. I'm, I'm very attentive. Yeah, right. Whatever. Put your hand down. Right. Let's do a quick test. Ready? Because I'm sure you are good learners, really, deep down. Ready? Question number one. Actually, why don't you take out your phone and your pencil and your paper and just write down your answer to this question. You ready? <clears throat> It's a very simple answer. True or false? God is always good. Very simple. No shouting out, Chris. I know this reminds you of the old days in the school. So I know, I know. All right, mate. Calm down, calm down. I think how many of us got that one? Everyone, everyone get that right? It's false, isn't it? Obviously false. Everyone got that? No, it's, it's true. It's true. I'll let you have that one. Next one. Question number two. God is always good to everyone. God is always good to everyone. Oh, not sounding so, so excited. What's happened? Okay, I just saw tumbleweed, literally. Rolling through the door. Oh, is God good to everyone? Hmm. All right, next question. God is always good to me. Write down your answer, please. <clears throat> is God always good to you? And number four, how do you know that you're correct? Okay, write down. You can, that's a bit of a longer answer. God is always good, true or false. God is always good to everyone on the planet, everyone. Number three, God is always good to me, because we've got to personalize it, true or false. And number four, how do you know? How do you know you're correct? About any of these answers. <coughs> okay, good. So who's got all the answers right? Anyone? Anyone feeling confident? Why is, okay, here you go, Gary. You made a slight movement, Gary, which suggests to me <coughs> it's, like, it's like being in school again. You, oh, I kind of want to answer, but I don't want to be a big head. Go on then, Gary. Is God always good? Good. Is God always good to everyone? Good. By the way, that's the right answer if you want to write that down. Uh, question number three, is God always good to you personally, though, Gary? Yes. Very good. And number four, how do you know? Uh, just the word, is that it? <laughs> just because it says it on a page somewhere, Gary. <laughs> yeah, that's your answer. Anyone got a better answer than that? Question number four, has anyone got a better answer? Because Gary's like, you got 75%, I'll give you 75%, definitely. The other one, maybe a half mark, half mark. Yeah, uh, Chris? Excellent answer. What, what do you mean experience? Just expand that a little bit. God is always good to you, to everyone, and, well, to you, yeah, sorry, God is good first. And how do you, what do you mean experience, Chris? God keeps blessing you. So blessing might be a sign of goodness. What if God is not blessing you at the moment? God's still good? 
What if God is letting you go through a complete trial right now? And it's an absolute nightmare and you hate it. And you want to smash your head against the wall every day. Oh, I can't take it anymore. Is God, is God still good? Go on, Nikki. What do you think? He is. He is. Amen. 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 It's definitely true that God is good all the time. Experience can definitely confirm that. And the word of God most definitely says it. But we have to learn it ourselves to the point we are utterly convinced no matter what the circumstances. So you're right, Gary. The word is true, but it doesn't always marry up with our immediate experience. I know the word immediate. Here's my next question. What does it mean to learn something? How do you really know that you know anything at all? Uh, into groups, that group, you can combine, you can combine. What does it really mean to learn something? Have a little uh, go, please. See if you can answer this question. Off you go. Anyone uh, learned how to be a really amazing teacher yet? Because, you know, that is the goal. If you're a teacher, your goal is to create a, an amazing learning environment, isn't it? And that, so all the kids really learn something. And so all the teachers are standing there going, okay, can you stop throwing that? Can you sit down, please? Can you, don't swear at me. Get out of here now! And in the meantime, they're thinking, has anyone actually learned anything in this lesson so far? And the answer is no. They, well, what they've learned is they already knew. They already knew how to throw a pencil at their friend. They already knew how to disrupt the lesson and to get on the teacher's nerves. They've already learned that from somewhere else. What do we think over here about what, it, what is actually meant by the term learning? Uh, I'm going to go with Lizzie. What did you think? It's just, it's just a fact. It's just a fact where? Outside? Like in the world? It's a fact. It is a fact. It was always a fact before you learned it. So what... Very good. That's right. That's good. And what did you say, uh, Nikki? What did you say? How do we... Imprints on you, just on your skin? You just walk around with like big stamps on you? Where does it imprint on you? In your memory. In your memory, in your brain. Good. What did you guys have as a, as a group? What did you have, Kev? Oh, definitely. The thing, I think that's the starting point. Definitely. You learn knowledge of how to do something. Good. I like that. And one more. Betty? What do you mean by that, Betty? That's a very a, a kind of ethereal comment. What do you mean? Not just in your head. You've experienced it. Uh, I'm, I'm good with that. I think that's pretty good. Let's have a look at the scriptures about what, what the word says. The Bible says about learning itself, the actual process of learning. 2 Timothy 3.7 says you're always learning and never able to arrive at knowledge of the truth. It is possible to always be learning something. <clears throat> oh yeah, I'm learning this again. Oh yeah, it's really true. God is definitely going to forgive me. Definitely really does forgive me. He really, really does forgive me. Like she said it, he said it, the Bible says it, everyone said it. He definitely forgives me. But do you personally know beyond all shadow of a doubt all the time without any doubt at all have you got hold of that truth for you personally? You totally believe that the next time that you switch on the TV and watch pornography or you accidentally um, hurt somebody, well, it's not really accidental because you were a bit angry at the time, and you're feeling ashamed of yourself. Oh, my word, how did I ever do that? What is wrong with me? There's then that emotion of shame, of guilt. Do you still go... Oh, thank you, Lord. Glad I'm forgiven. Or do you take your time coming back to God, thinking, mm, he's probably pretty annoyed at me right now. I'm going to just sort of uh, pretend that nothing happened and uh, not say anything and just carry on like everything's okay. Even though I know my conscience is telling me I've done something wrong, I'm gonna, I cannot take that to God because it's bad. 
Do you know that you're forgiven no matter what? Do you know that your God is so awesome and so loving and such an incredible father and saviour that he totally forgives you and cleanses you the moment you say sorry, the moment you come back to him? Many times in the scriptures in prayer, it talks about praying with thanksgiving. Can I give you a clue? If you want to know that something's happened in prayer, as you pray, Lord, please, ha- please forgive me. Please take away my sins. Don't finish praying until you say thank you. Philippians 4 says, 4 verse 6, we talked about it recently. It, with everything, with prayer and petitions and thanksgiving, present your request to God. The thanksgiving bit is you deciding, I believe this. It's you saying, I'm accepting this to be the truth. No matter what I feel, thank you, Lord, you're going to do this. Thank you, Father, for forgiving me. Thank you, Lord, it doesn't matter what I've done, you're still so good to me. You love me, Lord. Thank you. It's so powerful. Many of the Christians in Timothy's church, and Paul's writing to Timothy, they're learning, 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 and not actually arriving at having that true for them personally. You know, in the world, we've got things flipped around, of course. Oh, that's only true for you, right? So that means there isn't truth. No, there is truth, and it can be true for you. Right? That's the real real situation. It isn't a case that there's, there's suddenly, oh, the truth has just disappeared, and now it's all relative. We can just make up our own truth. The truth is always there. It's whether we accept it ourselves and have take, arrived at a knowledge of that truth ourselves. Proverbs 10, 17. Whoever heeds instruction is on the path to life, but he who rejects reproof leads others astray. What does that mean? What does that mean? What learning is happening there? Any? What do you think? Whoever heeds instruction. So you can be getting instruction, but what do you have to do with instruction for it to be true for you? Gary? Act on it. Exactly. Heeding is basically going, I'm going to apply that truth to my life from now on. I'm not going, in fact, that's why in sermons it's good to write stuff down that really speaks to you. So if you hear something, you think, I need to do that. Write it down before you forget. Because that's something else someone said on this side. It's about remembering. It was Maurice. Learning is about remembering and applying. But he who rejects reproof leads others astray. You can reject it. You can be taught all you like, and inside you're going, you're like nodding like this, church, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And inside your spirit, you're going, ah, oh, but it's not for me, not for me. No, 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 I won't be listening to that one. Uh, but yeah, it's a great concept. Oh, I'm sure it's true for everyone else. Yeah, yeah, it's not for me, though. Not for me. You can be deciding, I'm not going to accept that teaching, that reproof, that one that's going to change my life. Inside your will is going, yes or no? Do I accept this thought or do I reject this thought? It's exactly the same as if you have a negative thought, you choose to, de- to decide, am I going to receive this truth or is it a lie? If it's a lie, I'm going to reject it. But if it's truth, I want to receive it. That is a matter of the will. So you can have the same students with the same brain capacity sat in your class with the same teaching, doing the same work, and some of them will, will really learn it and some of them won't at all. Is that true, Larger? Right, you sat with a few of those students, have you? <laughs> he was one of the good students. See, I'm praising you today. Good enough. Romans 15, verse 4. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction. So all the Old Testament is there for our instruction. It isn't a history essay written by Moses and a few others that took forever. It is an incredible wealth of teaching. So want, we want to be reading both the New Testament and the Old Testament so that God can speak to us through both. That through endurance. By the way, did you know? Look at that. Learning, real learning, is emotional. You said it, Nikki. The things that you really imprint on your mind were emotional, right? You don't lose those ones. I remember that lesson. I'm never doing that again. That really hurt. Right, you do that to me again. I'm shutting the door. You're not coming into my space. We're learning from pain, from having to endure a situation. We're learning something good. Philippians 4.9. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Paul is saying to the church, this is what I was doing as a teacher. I was presenting information, knowledge. I was speaking it, and I was practicing it in front of you. What you've seen in me, 
when I stand up and say, God can do this, and, uh, but I'm not going to pray about it. So no, God can do this, so let's pray about it. That means I'm, belie- I'm showing you, let, let's just take some, have some faith and believe God's going to do what he said. Proverbs 9.9, 9, give instruction to a wise man and he will be still wiser. All right, it is wise to be teachable. It's wise to say, I don't know it all yet. I need to keep receiving. I don't, I don't want to, like, sign up. I'm, I'm done now. I've got everything I need, thanks. No, you haven't. God is constantly talking, constantly teaching all of us all the time. He will increase in learning, it says. Why is that? Because he's still receiving. He's still got an open heart. He's still teachable. And Psalm 32, 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go, you personally. I will counsel you personally with my eye upon you. God is a personal mentor. The Holy Spirit personally mentors each of us because we've all got different experiences that we need healing from or to get through. Okay, in Hebrews 8, it says, They serve a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. Did you know that? So when they were going in and out of the temple, and they were presenting the sacrifices, and they were, they were acting out in the natural what's in the spiritual. And that brings me to my first of three points. And I'm only going to be another 15 minutes relaxed. So. Number one, learning. Let's say it's uh, primary school learning. What God does when you become a Christian is you're in primary school. right? You are learning to stop sinning. Why is that? Why does God want you to stop sinning so badly? Like if he forgives it all, why why does he care? Why is he so bothered? What do you think, Lim? Why would he try and stop us sinning? Correct. Two great answers. Two separate answers. Number one. It can distance you from God because until you say sorry and restore a relationship, definitely you feel distant from God. But also it can harden your heart. So the more you just refuse, I'm not going to change, I'm not, I'm not going to do that anymore, I just, I just want to be left alone, just leave me alone. You're hardening your heart in that area. There's an area of your life maybe. Good answers. Thanks, Liam. He sets us free from, from bondage or, or problems that we've had ongoingly. He wants to set us free. He sets the captives free. That is one of the teachings that God does. How many of you, hands up please, you don't have to say what, used to be stuck in a particular sin? Put your hands up. Thank you. Good honesty. Great. Should be pretty much most people. Great. Some seriously holy people over there, mate. <laughs> That's crazy. Um. Copying has conditions, though, doesn't it? So if I say, just copy me, it'll be all right. Ready? After three, one, two, three, God is good and he loves me. You say it, Marcia, go, God is good. Brilliant. So that means she's learned that, right? Has she learned that? No, she just copied me. She just copied me, and then her mind went, is that true? Do I believe that? Right? Copying is just the first stage of learning, isn't it? How many of you have seen a little kid copying their parent. Right? They don't know how to cook. Right? But they're standing there with a little wooden tray. Going to like this in it. Put the, put the uh, sweet corn in there. And then put the tin right inside the same frying pan. What am I making here, mummy? Fried, <laughs> fried metal and uh, veg. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to taste great. Here, go eat it. And then they come and give it to you and you go, uh, yeah, it's lovely. Don't you? Especially if it's a mud cake. Have you ever had to eat that? Disgusting. Disgusting. Pretty bad, bad memories, that one. Um, shadowing has conditions. A copy and a shadow. When you shadow someone and you've got a new job, you go alongside and say, you're going to shadow me for a few weeks, okay? I am the administrator here. You are going to come in with me all day and learn how to be also an administrator here. Okay? So you're going to shadow me. What do they mean, Tiani? You probably use this term. Have you used that term, shadowing? You've done it. Okay, please tell us what it is. Great, thank you. Yeah, it's similar. Yes, it's very similar. It's very similar, but to a certain extent, you're also learning about time scales and stuff like that, attitudes. You're learning about other things that aren't necessarily the physical doing something, but more about how I am meant to be and who I'm meant to take this to. You're, you're learning a bit on a slightly more increased level because you're seeing more. You're seeing more of the full job. 
So being a Christian, if you shadow someone and you're hanging out with another Christian, pretty soon you start acting a bit like them. I think, I think I'll, you know, I like the way they do stuff. I think I'll just stop swearing. And maybe I'll just um, try and say some nice things every now and then, because he always does. He's really nice, like Nathaniel over there. If you're hanging out with Nathaniel, after a while you shadow him, don't you? I think, I'm not going to swear. I don't have to swear. Well, I am going to drive fast. Eh? <laughs> Can't leave him alone, can I? <laughs> Oh, I'm learning to be a Christian. <laughs> Sorry. I'll just keep it going for years, Nathaniel. It will never stop. Just so you know, it's never going to stop. Um, but the thing about shadowing is it might you start to think, but this might only work in those scenarios in which I've seen it work. So when you're hanging out with Christians and you're learning to follow Jesus and he's brought someone into your life to kind of influence you, you can start to think, mm, but maybe it only works for them and that situation and if I've got a situation slightly different it might not be the same it might, you know they're praying for headaches to be gone and I'm praying for like stomach aches to go right? it's not quite the same uh, probably not the... so in a sense until because they, just because you've seen it happen and they prayed and the headache went away and you, oh, my headache's gone, that was great wow, that's awesome and then you're at home walking along oh, that's seriously bad stomach I've just had just had curry from... No, no, I can't. I can't. We love Ararat. We don't want to upset anybody, right? Every business is great. <laughs> church, church, don't say anything. Yeah, not this one. Church service, just ridiculing the local businesses. No, let's not do that. But then you think to yourself, well, I remember they did actually pray. Maybe I should pray because, you know, being a Christian, you're supposed to pray about stuff. But it's not exactly the same, so I can't really believe for that, okay? So shadowing works to a certain extent. Next, we get to stage two of our Christian walk. So stage one, we'll, we'll, we know that there's some things God wants to deal with, and we're trusting him when we hear words that he's maybe speaking to us and we need to change, and we need to ask his help. Number two, see to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. Who was God speaking to? Do you know? Who remembers the story? Moses, thank you. Very well done. Well done. Moses was up on the mountain for a sustained period of time. Sometimes you need to just hang out with God long enough to get the instructions. Don't walk up the mountain and go, got anything to say to me? No? Okay, fine. Walk all the way back there. Stay up there for a while. Stay in his presence. He will talk to you. And he will show you the pattern of how to get out of things. He will also show you a pattern. What's a pattern? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just deciding whether I was going to actually ask the question or whether, yeah. But, yeah, yeah I was just looking at you because you smiled. I thought, well, what's she doing? No, a, a pattern is a repeat sequence or cycle. Yeah, good, good. As you repeat things in biblical understanding and learning and, and, and behavior, you adopt them. So if I just keep refusing to swear, eventually I stop swearing. Say, no, Lord, I'm not going to swear. I'll just use the word shoot instead. Oh, flip. Am I allowed to say that in Australia? It's all right, no? I guess I should have checked first. Um, something like I did the other day. I hit my thumb with a pickaxe. Remember that, Chris? That was mad painful. Oh. Shoot, that hurt. You know, back in the day, that's definitely not what I would have said. I would have said a whole load of things that were very bad. But now I've changed my language because by habit and repetition, when God keeps speaking to me, I have renewed my mind. All right? So patterns, that's a good stage. That's a good stage. It's where we're learning to get holy, to get rid of the enemy out of our lives. And we're spending more and more time, notice, with Jesus on the mountain. That is how you change. Spend time with God. The more time you spend with anyone, the more you, you become like them, right? Does, does anyone disagree with that? If you spend time with someone ongoingly, you kind of share mannerisms. You start picking up behavior traits from each other. And that's exactly the same with Jesus. The more you actually put that time aside to go up on the mountain, Australia hasn't got many of those, but you know, maybe up on One Tree Hill, that's where I go. Because it's kind of high. <laughs> that's about as high as it gets. And repeat, repeat, repeat. And last one. Personal mentoring. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, oh, this, we need to know the Lord. You know, 
Let, let me help you know the Lord. Because they'll all know me. That's a great promise, isn't it? From the least. Mia. Little Mia. She's going to know Jesus. To the greatest. BT. You're the greatest. In age. And spirituality. And loads of things. She's great. I love BT. But from the least to the greatest, they're all going to know me. It doesn't matter what background you've come from, what family you're a part of, what experience. Once you've walked into the, the house of God, everyone's on the same playing field. Do you know that? There are no supreme celebrities in church. You know that, right? No one is more important than anyone else. On Saturday, when we looked at that passage, it said that every part of the body is equally valuable and to be honoured. I love that passage. Just because I'm up here and I've got this gifting doesn't mean that I'm, I'm, the, I'm better than the person who's able to clear up and do things that are the servant person. Does it? Why? Why would it be better? That's a worldly way of thinking. That's not how God thinks about us. He treasures everyone and he loves how he's made you. It's not enough to know about something or someone. God desires to know him personally and to experience him person, tangibly. And we should feel a real personal love for God. There is a challenge when you're bringing up kids where you're desperately hoping that at some point they are beginning to speak to God themselves and that you're no longer making that happen. You're no longer giving them that opportunity. So let's pray. Come on, let's pray for dinner. Good, oh, we all prayed. Oh, good, we actually all spoke to God. At some point, you're hoping that they themselves go, God, I, I love you. I want you to be my saviour. I want you to be my father in heaven. I want you to be my king. I want to do what you asked me to do. There's a point where everyone's got to get that for themselves, right? And God is faithful to all of us equally. So I want to respond like this. If you could go and grab the other day. What area of bondage or struggle is God setting us free from right now? Now, you might go, oh, I, I'm, I'm pretty okay now. I've been walking with the Lord for a long time. Do you know, I, I heard a preach from Joyce Meyer the other day, and she said, oh, you know, you might think I'm going on God, good with God, but, you know, he brought up two things for me the other day. He said to me, you didn't need to say that. Still challenging my language, challenging the things I say to people. He challenged me on another thing about being selfish. This is Joyce Meyer. He's a very well-known preacher who I do respect and I do think is godly. And we're all in the same boat. God, we're never done. <laughs> Paul said, I don't believe I've finished. I keep running the race right to the end. Paul, the apostle. Unless you're better than Paul, which, you know, that's, if you are, please let me know. We'd like to give you more ministry opportunities. Paul's Paul shout handkerchief. People got healed touching, getting a handkerchief from Paul, right? So he's on a, another level of faith and power. But if you're not, then you're like me. God will bring things up every now and then. And you'll go, oh, man, yeah, that's come up again. Why? I thought I dealt with that. Man, sorry, Lord. Please heal me. Please, please make me holy. Purify my heart. Who are you shadowing? Who is your mentor? Again, there comes a point where the older generation, olders in terms of spiritually mature people, are mentoring other people. But they themselves should still be in positive relationship with someone else who can speak into their life, right? I maintain this with Phil Tong. We didn't have to, but we've chosen to. We connect with each other to hold each other accountable every two weeks, and I love it because I feel it's so real. I don't have to, I can just talk honestly and openly, and if, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And same for him. What time do you spend on your mountain? Remember, God wants you up that mountain with him, not, not me and then me telling you about the mountain. He wants you going up and spending time with Jesus on your own. Maybe you walk around the lake. Maybe while you're shopping. I don't know. Find a time when you're just on your own, in your own thoughts, and talk to Jesus. Lord, how do you feel about things at the moment? Is there anything I need to pray about? Is there something on your mind for me? And you will gradually develop trust in him as a, as a father. And lastly, do you follow the patterns he's taught us? So if you don't know how to do something, there will already be a way to do it. God has already taught everything from the Bible through every church, and it just might be that you haven't heard it yet. You might need to say, how do I get out of debt? 
How do I save money? I don't, I've never done it before. How do I do it? And the only way you really truly know that your relationship with God is if he's answering your prayers. Okay? Obviously, it does say in the Bible we should pray for one another, but we also want to have a, a situation where you yourself can pray and ask God for something, believing he's going to answer you. And you don't need someone else to do it. All right? So I'm going to pray to finish, and I'm just going to ask that God speaks to us about one of those areas maybe that we're, we're walking in and he wants to heal or do something about. And also, maybe we need to think, have I got a, have I got a mentor? Is there someone I'm actually submitted to, listening to on a regular basis? Is there someone I'm learning from? Am I spending any time in the, on the mountain with Jesus? Where can I do that? What's going to work for my, where's my mountain? Ask God maybe, where's my mountain, Lord, that I can spend regular time with you? Is that okay? Everyone all right with that? And that real learning is when you've, you've absorbed that truth and now you act on it yourself. So much so you actually can teach someone else. Lord, I just want to commit today to you, Lord. I thank you that, uh, Lord, you want us to really actually learn things, not just know about stuff. Not walk out of our school and go, yeah, I remember some stuff. But Lord, we want to be able to apply it. Lord, and I pray, Lord, just like I did the other day, I actually applied Sokar Toa, by the way, just in case you learned that one, in maths. I actually used it. So that proved that I've learned it. It's great. Now. Lord, I pray that you would teach us your ways and also, Lord, that you would give us the opportunity, the classroom, so to speak, the place to come and meet with you, the, the, the mentor, the teacher, someone who's going to come alongside us and talk, talk us through it, shadow, that we could shadow. But also, Lord, most importantly of all, I pray that each of us will develop our own relationship with you, that we begin to take the word as truth, we begin to pray as you ask us to, and then we see the results because you're a good God and you do, you do not lie. Lord, we love you and we commit today to you and ask you to speak to us. Amen.